Recently, I have been trying to find the perfect software for whiteboard animations. And so far, nothing really was satisfactory. I mean, maybe they are really good for uh, other stuff, but not exactly for educational material. Uh, but we are going to get to that in a different video. Meanwhile, I have had a different approach. I'm going to film myself writing and drawing on a paper and then do some processing to make it look maybe a little bit better. The problem is, I don't want my hand or my shadow to show on the paper while I'm drawing. So basically, I need the, the to make it look like the words are writing themselves. Basically, something like that. So, uh, I have had this idea with OpenCV. My input is going to be uh, the video of me drawing and writing. And the output has to be a video like this, where uh, it's just the words are drawing themselves. So, to take things step by step, I'm going to pre create like a, a basic constraint. The first frame of the video has to contain the empty paper. So, th this way, the, our program, our implementation will know what color the paper is. And the last frame of this video has to contain the final form. Basically, this, this is to let the, our program know what exactly are we drawing. And it should also know the color of the ink. Okay, let's take an example here. We are going to be using OpenCV. Usually, I use C++. I use Qt Creator. Uh, if you don't know how to install it, this, this could be in a different video. Uh, feel free to ask in the comments. Uh, but let's get started. We have and first you have to have uh, OpenCV. I'm using OpenCV 4.5. You need to have it installed on your PC. So this CMake file has been automatically generated by Qt Creator. Uh, it's a very simple file. It only contains this one file, which is main.cpp. Uh, I mean, the rest is just automatically generated. And I have only added this line. So this line will find the package of OpenCV and then uh, here we can use this finding in adding the include directories and adding the libraries that we are going to link with. Okay, let's get started with the example. Well, this is a very basic example. I am going to open the video file and I'm going to loop on every single frame and I'm going to dump this frame on an image file. So, uh, First, you have to include OpenCV2 slash OpenCV.HPP. And here we have got the creating the object for the video capture. I'm going to pass the video path. And this video capture is the constructor of the class video capture. And here it's supposed to be opening the file. And then I'm going to call video retreat. So I'm going to keep reading, reading, reading until this function returns false. And this is how I know that the video has ended. And every time I read, and it's true, every time we have a successful read, we are going to get a frame in this matrix object. Basically, it's an image. So if anything in OpenCV is actually a matrix. An image is a matrix because it has got uh, uh, columns and rows and, and colors in each cell. So basically, it's a matrix. Uh, and here we have got uh, im write image write, which is the function to output an image to a file. Here is going to be uh, the file name. The file name is just a sequence of files like this, depending on the, this counter, on the frame counter. And I'm going to also pass the frame. So after I run this program, uh, let me show you. This is going to be the video file. And... The output of this program is going to be a sequence of images inside this folder, the in folder. Okay, let's build and run and let's see what happens. And if we take a look at this folder, we will see that all the frames has been generated. So basically, this is the raw input. This is the actual original video. And as you have mentioned before, the first frame contains the empty paper. The last frame should contain the very final form of the video, which is uh, the very last frame with all the writings and everything after we finish. Okay, that's all for the first step. Let's take it to the next level. Okay, like we mentioned before, we need to get the first frame and the final frame as references. We are going to read the first frame. I mean, after we create the, 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 the object, 
the first frame we read is the first frame in the video. Here we're going to fetch how many frames do we have in this video. So basically we say get and we pass this enumerator to get the frame count. So that's how we know how many frames do we have in the video. And here we are setting the position of the frame. So basically this means if it's zero, it means we're at the first frame. If it's number of frames minus one, it means we're at the last frame. And after we set the position, we're going to read the frame. And for testing, we're going to be dumping these two files, these two frames in separate files. Of course, after we read the last frame, we're going to rewind to read everything again. Okay, so let's compile and run and see what happens. And as we can see, if you go up, I have got this file called last and this file called first. Okay, uh, now let's take it to the next level. Okay, so now we need to, like we said, we need to investigate what are the colors of these two frames. We need to know what colors are in the empty paper and what colors are in the ink. Uh, so this is how. We are going to, to calculate the histogram. The histogram is basically uh, like a probability distribution function or uh, like basically for each color, how many pixels contain this color? So basically, ideally, we have got uh, 16 million colors. So this means our histogram ideally should contain 16 million or like, like the exact number, 16, about 16 million cells and each one contains how many pixels has got this color. But that's really a lot of data and we don't really care about these differences. So uh, we are going to do an approximation. So basically each 10, each eight grades of the color will belong to the same group. Uh, that's for the grouping. Uh, also for calculating the histogram, we might be interested in a certain range of colors. So we have got like a minimum and maximum for red and green and blue. And in our case, we are interested in the full range. So that's why we are going to be set, setting the range from 0 to 256 for each of them, blue and green and red. Uh, and we're going to do it for the three channels. Basically, calculating the histogram allow us to customize as much as we want the number of groups, the ranges, and the channels. Basically, you might be creating a histogram for just the red or just the blue. In our case, we're going to be creating for the three channels. So that's why we need to set how many channels do we need or what are the channels. So this is how we are going to call the function. The function is called calc hist for calculating the histogram. Our histogram is also going to be a matrix. In this case, it's going to be a three-dimensional matrix because we will be, we'll be having uh, red as a dimension, blue as a dimension, and green as a dimension. Um, so basically, we give it the frame and the number of frames because current, actually we can enter more than one frame in the same histogram. Uh, so basically it's expecting here an array. I'm not giving an array. I'm giving just one element. So just the address and the number of frames, which is one and the rest of the inputs who have got the channels. And this entry is actually called a mask. Basically a mask is some sort of a binary image, uh, monochrome. So it's e either white or black. If it's white, then this pixel will be considered. If it's black, then this pixel will be ignored. We are going to be using it later. So right now we are interested in all the pixels. So we are going to give an empty mask. Uh, and this would be the output. This is the number of dimensions because we have three channels. And these are the sizes, the ranges. And about these two, two booleans, uh, this is called uniform. And uniform means that every single group has got the same size. So uh, we have 32 groups. This means that there are eight shades in each group. If it's not uniform, that means that some groups are bigger than others. In our case, we need it to be uniform. And this is called incremental. Incremental means that we might increment uh, on the previous histogram. So in our case, we want to calculate the histogram for two, for, for, uh, two frames. So uh, we want it to be incremental. Okay, after calculating the histogram, we are going to get uh, what are the colors that are allowed. 
basically you are interested in the colors of the paper and the ink we want to know what are the ink colors so we are going to gather all this information from the histogram and that's exactly how you access the histogram uh, you, you say at actually this is how you access anything in the matrix and you need to know the type so in case of images you can say uh, the, the image dot at uh, and you need to specify an unsigned character in, in case of the histogram it's going to be a float uh, and then you specify the coordinates in our case it's a three-dimensional matrix and uh, this condition is just simply saying do you have any pixels literally any pixel that has got uh, this color if you have more than zero pixels if you have at least one pixel then this color is acceptable this color is in our list let's take it in the list uh, after gathering this information um, well, like we said, now we know what colors are the paper and ink. Now we know exactly what are the colors that are allowed. Uh, so in case you see some shades that are not allowed, this is a red flag. This means like this could be a hand, this could be a shadow, this could be something else. It's not paper, it's not ink, then we don't want it. Okay, so uh, we're going to do the same. We're going to fetch every single frame in the video and uh, we are going to calculate the histogram also we need to inspect what are the colors that has got we have uh, we have got in this frame if we have got any colors other than the allowed colors any colors other than paper or ink this means there's something else in this in, in this frame and this means we do not want this frame uh, so we're going to be calling it the good pixels so we're going to loop over uh, the list of allowed colors and we're going to calculate the total number of pixels that only has got allowed colors and the rest of these pixels are going to be something else so the total number of pixels is going to be of course obviously rows times columns and how many of these are good pixels okay so uh, before we take any decisions i'm just going to print how many pixels are good pixels and what are the total number of pixels for every single frame okay let's compile and run and see what happens so the first frame has got 100 percent good pixels obviously because it's it was a reference frame we have like a very fair amount of good pixels up until let's say frame number um 50, 54 okay so number frame number 54 contains a good amount of good pixels paper or ink frame number 55 is not exactly like that okay let's check out why uh, we have got the list of uh, these files and as you can see all of these are just the empty paper and let's see starting from 55 we have got a fingertip and a pen so that's why uh, it got a lower score. We can call this a score. So frame 54 was okay. Frame 55 was not okay. And then we can take further look. Uh, we can see that it's still like a very low grade, lower grade, lower grade, up until frame number uh, 123, 124. The scores are getting high again. Maybe, maybe even since 122. If we take a look at these frames starting from 122, we are going to find that uh, I have removed my hand and there is no shadow. So the, the grading went actually better. And we notice that we have got a piece of ink right here, but this ink has is already uh, has a color in our accepted list. So that's why it's uh, it's considered a good grade. Okay. Uh, that seems like a very fair way to uh, classify the frames. We can eliminate the ones that we do not want and accept the ones that we want. So uh, let's take a decision based on this grading. For the next step, we are going to be calculating a percentage. It's exactly like the, the previous step, but we are only just calculating this percentage. And based on this percentage, if we have, let's say, 98% uh, of the pixels are good pixels, we are going to output this in our uh, output folder. 
so uh, let's create an output folder and if we run this program we are going to have uh, only the, the accepted frames only the ones with a majority of paper and ink and nothing else but let's take a look at the output and see what happens as you can see uh, up until frame okay as you can see it stopped until frame 54 55 was not accepted and we're back again at 122 seems fair uh, we can take a look at the rest and we can see that there is also another change um, and we can see that these the, the drawing is actually drawing itself if we go further we can see that it's advancing advancing and I cannot see my hand except for, for some exceptions like this so uh, in frame 716 we have got a finger, a small fingertip and we can actually take a look why aha uh -huh, it got a really high score and this could be because um, this color is not exactly rare it could actually match uh, the colors right here um, so we gotta go think of another criteria to eliminate other frames yeah so let's take a look at this in the next video for now, I think this could be enough. Thanks guys for watching and I will see you next time.